Hey, hey, y'all. It's your boy, Wise, and I'm here with my fam, Lucy and Tori, and we are back for another fun, amazing episode of the Triple Dose Podcast. Um, Let's start how we normally do, you know, with our check-ins to see how everybody has been since the last time we was on the line. What's up, y'all? Well, I've been all right. I can't complain. I don't really have any complaints. You know, things is going as good as they can go. Um, you know, I'm s- still adjusting with work and everything, just kind of getting into the swing of a new position, new role and everything like that. But, you know, it's it's been kind of, you know, a little fun, a little interesting. But, I mean, I really have nothing to complain about. <laughs> How have you guys been? <laughs> Um, that's good. You don't, you don't have anything to complain about. I think that's a good way to kind of try to go through life, you know, not to complain. Yeah. There's an old song that says, I won't complain. I, um, have a lot to do this weekend. And so, you know how, like, you have so much to do and then you don't, like, adhere to your plans. So, mm-hmm. Saturday, I was supposed to do get all this work done. And it didn't happen because I ended up going to the park with a friend of mine and we went to the park for, like, Two hours, maybe an hour and a half, two hours, just walking around the park. And then I came home, cleaned up. I said, well, you know, I'm going to take me a little nap. And then I woke up from my nap. I was ready to start getting productive. And then they were like, well, you know what? I'm having a barbecue at the house. You know, I'm about <laughs> to pull over. It was a beautiful day in Atlanta. I mean, it was a beautiful day. It was breezy. The sun was out. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't humid. It was the perfect day for outdoor barbecue. And so I said, you know what, Wesley, you don't have anything. I mean, I do have anything other stuff to do, but I don't typically, you know, not doing a lot of stuff and hanging out as often. So I said, you know what, just get dressed, get up and go. So I did. And so now that meant today, Sunday, today, <laughs> I have a lot to do. But um, other than that, all is well. Same old, same old. I'm just going to keep on trucking along. So quick question. Are you going to prepare to in the future not bring work home well i normally don't so i usually don't bring work i'm sorry my microphone is acting weird uh i usually don't bring too much work home or i'll do like one thing at home but unfortunately i'm 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 working for somebody else again i think i talked about this last year so i have double responsibilities gotcha and so because of that it's made me it's put me behind on my yeah. own work during the work week. And so I, I'm probably going to work these next maybe two weekends to like just kind of set myself up. And hopefully, once I get everything squared away, I will be able to go back to my normal don't bring work home. <laughs> okay. And then I'm sorry, but I had a, I do have one complaint. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to share with you guys. So I went to Kroger yesterday. And, you know, I just get a couple of things, you know, and uh, mind you, um, the Kroger that I went to is one, it's kind of by my house, but I just, it's the less than preferred <laughs> that I, you know, but I just go there because it's close. So they have like these carts and I'm like, oh, this is cool. They got these cute new carts, right? You know, they don't squeak as much. They roll a little better, <laughs> you know? Okay, cool. So as I'm going through the store, I'm getting my items, I'm shopping. I, oh, let me go ahead and grab a case of water. I grab a case of water and then I bend down and put it on the bottom, you know, shelf of the cart. And then I realized there is no shelf. <laughs> there is no bottom undercarriage where you typically put your, like, you know, your water, your paper towels, whatever. That's bigger items that you don't want to put in the top. And I'm looking around. All the carts are built this way now. So it wasn't just one. It was just the cart that I had. I got the bigger buggy cart thing. Um, And none of them have a a bottom for you to put your stuff in at the bottom. And I just said, why would y'all do this? Why would you put out a whole new cart? Was it the scan and go cart? Did you get a scan and go cart? It was just a regular cart. they I don't even know if they got scan and go at the Kroger that I'm talking about. <laughs> I think they do. Well, all I know is it was just a regular cart. It wasn't a scan and go. It was a regular cart. I ain't never and seen that before. I got to thinking. I said, this is not functional. Like, if you want to get a whole... Like, imagine if I had to get a whole bunch of groceries. I'm trying to fill up my cart. 
who wants to put a big case of water in the top, take up all that space? You know what I mean? And then some people like to prefer to lift, like, you know, put it under and lift that way versus putting it over the cop, over the um cart. And I got to think, and I said, I wonder if they did this for ceiling purposes because they tired of folks putting stuff <laughs> under there and not still and, and 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 not scanning or forgetting to scan something. But they got that thing at the bottom of the. Don't they have that yeah. little window? They at don't the have it at the U scan. Oh, that's true. So that's with true. the fact that they got it to where they got the U scans opened up more now, barely. Well, barely. Because let me say what happened to me last week when I went to Walmart. <laughs> now you got me. Here we go again with our grocery store. Answer. <laughs> I had to. Go to, I said I'm done with Walmart. I had to go to the grocery store after work one day, and so it's like five o'clock. That's prime time to be at the grocery store, and Walmart decided to that we're not going to open any of the self checkouts. None of them. And you know Walmart usually have self checkouts on both sides. On right. both sides. Because they don't have sides, no cashiers. <laughs> both sides were closed down at five o'clock on a weekday, like a Thursday, like a, uh, like a Thursday uh, uh, or a Wednesday or Thursday after five o'clock, and all they had was like maybe four people, you know, <laughs> oh, at the registers. I'm like, this mm-hmm. is wild. Do y'all want to check my receipt? I still do that. <laughs> that still gets me every time. Wait a minute, they checked your receipt? They check receipts here at Walmart. Like yeah, because they let us be full of like, things. They, they do it like a Sam's Club. I ain't got Rush time. And grab some stuff. I ain't got time. Most of the time, I keep going. And he let me, actually, today, he let me keep going. I mean, yeah, today, the day I went, he was like, go ahead and go. But I was just like, well, let me tell you about my store shenanigans today. I looked out today, thank God. Good. So this morning, um, you know, it's the weekend, and, and you know, you, you people run to the store, they, they got to get stuff. And I just needed a, I just needed a few things, right? I didn't need, I needed like some soap, some toothpaste, like stuff like that. I'm run, I want to run in and out. So I didn't want to go to a big store, a big Kroger. I was gonna go to the location Kroger Tory that you were talking about, but then on the way to that Kroger, that's also a Dollar General. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in in the morning, I'm like, okay, maybe I could just run into Dollar General real quick, get what I need in and out, right? But I've had situations at that Dollar General in the past where I have gone in there, middle of the day, daytime, and a store's not open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not that um, it's you know outside the store hours, just ain't nobody. Nobody's at work. <laughs> nobody's at work. Nobody today. showed up. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like, man, I'm sitting here debating, like, oh my god, I really don't want to go. It's this big program. I've seen a few things. Like, I really hope this um, Dollar General is open. So. I'm going down the street and I'm kind of, as I'm approaching, I'm looking to see, you know, if it's cars out there because, you know, that it might be open. So I see two, three cars in there. So, okay, okay, let me run in here. Thank God it's open real quick. And lately I've been a little bit aloof about things, maybe because I'm like back to work and I'm just not paying much attention. Mm-mm, but when I get, <laughs> when I get to the door, the employee is standing in a, um, the double, you know, the sliding glass door. And I'm like, I kind of like make a face and she's like, oh, just come on in. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, that was just, you know, I'm like, okay, that was weird. I don't you know. Maybe she was cleaning the windows or something. That's actually what I thought. Like she was wiping out the windows. I get my little basket and I get my little thing, my soap, my toothpaste, my mouthwash, whatever. And um, as I'm walking back in the store, I hear her say, attention, Dollar General customers. The store will be closing in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, it is like 10 45, 10 50 in the morning. So I'm like, what's going on? And then I hear her say to another customer, I'm sorry, I just don't feel well. And I'm like, okay, well, let me get myself an animated. I guess I made it here just in time. <laughs> so I get up front and I'm checking my stuff out. And um, it's people outside the doors looking in the window and stuff, but the door's not open. Now. Obviously, she didn't lock the door. <laughs> And so she's like, "Yeah, I'm sorry. They gonna have to. Um, they gonna have to read that sign. I gotta go. Uh, uh-uh, uh, I gotta go. I don't. It's still gonna be close to two o'clock." And I just was like, "Well, look at God that I pulled up <laughs> just in the nick of time because right. I did not want to go into Kroger Listen. for two little, three little hygiene products." The but sad, the sad just, thing about it is <laughs> that that happened all the time, and this is normal like, now. And this, and, and and it's 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 a reflection too on these businesses because. Dollar General, Dollar Tree, Family, Family Dollar. Mm-hmm. A lot of times they like to just put one person on the shift. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is what happened when you don't got more 
don't you don't have you because you don't want to pay folks to be at work all day right because now now you got to shut the store down and lose money for some hours because you didn't want to just go ahead and put two people in there and even still if it was just one like person i feel like that's a safety issue still like just to have one person there but like they just don't want to staff the store that's always everywhere they, even at cvs when you go to cvs or walgreens it'd be one person working <laughs> they'd be, they be having to stock the stuff and they'd be okay i'll be yes. there in a second it's like gosh they, don't, they need some help that's but, why it's never fully um unpacked every time you go on a dollar dollar general, oh, it's it's dollar general boxes, especially it's everywhere. boxes everywhere oh, all over the place they can barely unpack so I don't know what's going on with the customer service in the stores these days, but they could they could stand to use to get some stuff together. Well, speaking of getting some stuff together, it appears as though our good girl from Beyonce has been getting some stuff together behind the scenes. So this week, oh sorry, I just jumped right into the topics. <laughs> I didn't even introduce it. We're going to start into our talking points this week. Um, and I wanted to start talking about Beyonce, who released this new whiskey, Sir Davis, um, that is available for pre-order now. If you're a whiskey drinker, you can purchase it. Um, she secretly submitted the Sir Davis to these prestigious whiskey competitions, which who knew that they had those, but they do apparently. And she wants some, she wants some awards. Um, she actually uh entered into the competitions under a pseudonym so that people would not associate it with her, even though I don't think anybody would have because we didn't know what she was doing. But she won Best Class at the SIP Awards. She won the Gold Medal at the New York International Spirits Competition. And she won Highly Recommended at Ultimate Spirits uh, Challenge. And apparently the Sir Davis Whiskey is an ode to a great-grandfather, a great-grandfather, who was supposedly, you know, active during the Prohibition era, you know, when it was illegal and um, illegal? was, you know, illegal, correct, illegal to sell alcohol or use alcohol. So this is her latest business venture. And um, y'all know, y'all listen to the show, y'all know we love Beyonce over here, and I really do. However, I have to take a stand. And I don't know if we talked about this before on the show, but I'm not giving Beyonce no more of my money until she give me what I want. And what I want... Don't say that. <laughs> what I want <laughs> is the Renaissance visuals. And I would appreciate some Cabo Corner visuals as well. But really, it's the Renaissance for me because you promoted that. You you had pictures. You had little posters and the little boxes and everything. That snippet. That little snippet Snippets of... Um, that came I'm out. that girl. And we have yet to get them. It's been over two years. So yeah. I, Beyonce, I'm taking this. I ain't bought Sacred. I didn't bought no more merch when the merch dropped a couple weeks ago. And I'm not buying this whiskey until I can see her whiskeying on the camera. This, this is the thing, y'all. I feel like Renaissance deserves visuals. I can go without Carway Carter. <laughs> like, like and I like Carway Carter. Don't get me wrong. I need him. But the songs on Renaissance yes. require... Like, there's necessary because Beyonce is the queen of visuals. So nobody does visuals better than her. Like we need the visuals. And I just feel like we are we're lacking without the visuals. It is. And, it, and, and what gets me about it is because and, Beyonce, you started this. You wanted to start, you started this with the whole, I'm gonna do a song for every uh for every a visual a video for every song on Beyonce. I'm gonna drop Lemonade and it's gonna be a whole movie on HBO. I'm gonna do um Homecoming, it's gonna be on Netflix. Like you started this precedent, girl. Don't act like I'm being brand new. You being brand new. Why are you being weird to me, Beyonce? I don't get it. She did a gift. We had the whole did that whole um what was it? Uh with the um was, was that Lion King? Lion King. Lion King. Lion King. Yes. Like everything. Like what's going on with Renaissance? Why we didn't get that? Mother said, Y'all gonna take what I give. Um, and that's why she didn't get no more of my money. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that because Not no right mother, now. no mother. <laughs> She may not ever give us the visual. She might not. And you know she gonna she might drop some other content. So I can't quite say that, but I am, you know, I will I will say I do still want the visuals for Renaissance and I want Cowboy Carter Carter because I feel like that was a whole storytelling, you know, yeah, I and I need the visuals to that too. So I'm this is my prayer. This is my prayer. And Beyonce, 
I hope the spirit of the God touch you with my prayer. <laughs> my prayer is after she do her third act, she hits us and just knocks us out <laughs> with a feature film or something that has all the visuals for each project wrapped up into this one big, one big gift to us. Now, if Beyonce does that, she's going to slay us. We're going to be out. We're, she, but if she does that, if she does Tori. that it's going to sell out so fast. It's not. It's going to be a coin. It's going to cost. She's going to. Coin. It's going to cost a coin. And she's probably. And it's probably and going to sell out so quickly. You want? She's going to snatch our wallets. She's going to have us donating blood and get <laughs> <laughs> and skipping mortgage payments and stuff. Like she's going to have us doing those things to get it. But I feel like that's what I want. And if, if she do that, I, I can't even be mad. Be mad at her. For the coins I spent because I asked for it. I wanted it. Well, until that day comes. <sighs> anything else no. in the in between time, she ain't getting no money from me. <laughs> I can't promise that either. I can't I'm probably, promise that. I'm probably gonna try to buy sacred. I'm gonna try to buy sacred on my next well, my next system. Um my I don't like to buy new shampoos and conditions or stuff until I'm done with the one I'm using. Yeah. So once I'm done with the one I'm using now. I'm going to, you know, save a couple of ducats because it ain't cheap. Yeah. I'm going to save a couple of ducats I was, I want and try to save it because it's been a lot of good things about it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, switching gears, you all, we got to get back into some hot topics and some things that happened this week that had everybody just ablaze. And one of the things that happened this week is that we found out that uh, Mrs. Linda Mathis, a.k.a. Judge Mathis, Judge Greg Mathis' wife, has filed for divorce. Now, they've been married for 39 years. Not sure how long they were dating prior to 39 years and really the only reason why i wanted to bring this up because it got me to thinking after 39 years of marriage what did a mother ever do <laughs> after 39 years of marriage four kids later to make somebody call, file for divorce in a mid to late 60s so what are your theories because i got some theories what i think might have happened well first of all i was very saddened to hear that you know because <clears throat> I don't know. They had a short-lived reality show mm -hmm. on, I think I want to say E, or maybe was it E? Maybe it was it, E. It I don't know. E, yeah. Okay, with their family and the kids and the grandkids and the spouses. And it was just very nice. It was a very wholesome family show. Beautiful family. His wife is gorgeous. I mean, to be in her mid-60s, I mean, beautiful. Um, so I don't know what he did and did to fumble the bag. Um, some people say it could be related to the fact that he retired now. So, because he was doing his show, and his show was shot in Chicago. So, when he was doing his show, he was in Chicago. She was in L.A. So, maybe over the course of the last, I don't know, his show been on for, what, 20, 20 years, maybe? Since 98. Yeah, okay, long time. You know, that they've gotten used to having that little bit of time apart. And, you, you know, you enjoy your time together when you're together. Because, you, you know, abs um, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Maybe not they together all the time. It's you know starting to get on each other's nerves. I don't know, but that is unfortunate because after, like you said, for so long. I mean, what you gonna I do? Mean, you ain't gonna get married again? Just, just stay with the man. I feel like it gotta be something low down and disrespectful. Me too. Because I feel like you just being like, oh, maybe we. I don't believe it's just that now we got to be together more because you got you got money. You can go take a trip. You can go across to the other side of the house and take a break. You don't got to be up under each other. It has to be, to, in my opinion, something low down, dirty, egregious. Egregious, egregious, disrespectful to the point she said, you know what? No more. No more. That I'd rather be at peace to take my half of the fortune and live by myself than to be with you. Because the other thing about it is, this is what I thought about, too, is the fact that, you know, even still, like, because, like, things happen, you know, there's infidelity, stuff happens, and people might get over it, or they might ignore it, because it's like, okay, we got money, we older now, it is what it is, I'ma just, you know, cheat respectfully, <laughs> you know, some people had a little thing, mm -hmm. but if you know, like, I'm not going to be at peace, and I don't have to, like, live like this, I can get my money, I can be fine. Also, I don't want to risk the fact that you get sick and I got to take care of you when really I'm mad at you because we decided to just stay together because we've been together so long. But then we we getting older now. So what happens when, you know, now I got to take care of you <laughs> after you did me so much dirty and did me so much wrong? I don't know if I can have that, you know. Yeah. 
same soft side spot for you. And just because of, just because we chose to stay together for the sake of the time that we have had or the history. Like, I don't want to live my last days taking care of you when I can just be happy by myself. Because that's been the argument that people have been saying. It's like, well, why just not stay together, man? It's been mm-hmm. 39 years to stay together. And I'm in agreement with you, Tori, that I think it had to be something egregious. Because 39 years, four children, been with somebody for all this time, you got money, you know, I'm like, what? He had a baby on you, girl? What he do? Is it, a, is it another family somewhere? Like, what's really like? What? Like, what was it? I don't even know if it, I believe it was just something as simple as just cheating. Because right. for a lot of the women, uh, for certain women, and I don't know if she, I don't know enough about her to say this is her, but for a lot of women who have a wealthy man and husband, they kind of just let that go sometimes. You and know? having babies too. Well, that's true. Sometimes it be. Sometimes they <laughs> yeah. let them have multiple kids and babies on you too. So, so I mean, I mean, was it like he cheated with your sister or something? I don't like, know, but it was something egregious. <laughs> it's, it was something egregious. And I just want to know what it was. Is that bad? I shouldn't be so nosy. Uh, maybe it'll come out in a divorce. <laughs> it probably will. Because I'm sure they're not going to seal it. Somebody going to get it. Yeah, somebody going to figure out, look at the court documents and find out what happened. Um, Y'all, speaking of divorces and marriages and marriages and divorces. <sighs> you know, Cam Newton, he has a, a podcast or a, a YouTube chant show and He's interviewed quite a few, you know, actually nice, some, quite a few people who are very popular and mm-hmm. have some great interviews. Um, he annoys me, though, on his interviews. I'll be honest with you. Often he seems very antagonist, antagonistic sometimes, or he'll be contrary, just to be contrary. And that, that kind of irritates me a little bit. But um, there's a clip going viral um, of the interview that he did with a woman um, named Dr. Brian. Um, and they were talking about relationships. And so it kind of starts off with him saying something to the effect of people think that he's not high functioning because of his situation. And then she goes on to ask him about his situation and he proceeds to tell her. So why can we just go to the clip? And I want to play the whole thing. It is long, but you really need the context in order for us to really explain this. Function. What situation? Okay, so I'm not married. I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. By eight. how many women? Three. And this is the kicker. I want more. By multiple women? What's the intent? I just want God by to your bring wife? them. I just want God to bring them. Oh, okay. My desire to get married is lower than my fear of divorce. So, as you had said, Dr. Bryant, you said it, I didn't say it, I will agree. I'm just taking my time. You're not taking your time. I am, though. You're being very action-based. You're not taking your time. I'm taking my time. You're being very action-based. You have eight kids with three different women. You are creating, procreating, and multiplying. That is not taking your time. You're being very selectively active. Mm. Okay? So you're creating, Mm -hmm. in disclaimer, the kids are innocent. They are beautiful and amazing. Anything I say has nothing to do with them babies. But you are proactively choosing where you want to be active at and where you want to take your time. Mm-hmm. You want to take your time in having a wife because of your own fears. But you will, and I say this with all respect and love, what I'm about to say next, okay, Cam? But you will selfishly create broken families, even if you're in their life and you're a proactive father, and I believe you're an amazing daddy. I can only imagine with just your presence and, and knowing you. But these families are still broken. Every child cannot have Papa in the house with them. So some child, if not all, all will end up with some kind of deficit without daddy being there. Mm-hmm. Now, you chose to do that. I'm not saying you sat there and woke up one morning and said, I want to be selfish today, so I'm going to go make a baby. Not saying that at all. But those are selfish acts at the expense of your fear. And yeah, that is a low functioning behavior to say that I'm going to build these houses and put kids and these beautiful women and kids in them, but I ain't going to create a home in them. I'm going to wait till I dissipate my fear to find a wife where I'm still going to be fearful with because there's no such thing as not having some type of nerve or some type of feeling behind marrying somebody. And then I'm going to build a home with her while all these other beautiful babies have houses. That's completely unfair and that's selfish. And so, yes, you're taking your time in this department, 
but you're not taking your time in this department, which means you're compartmentalizing. And compartmentalizing never works. Compartmentalizing hurts everybody involved. Everybody who's in this box and that box and this box and that box and this box. And then here you go over here trying to figure out what box you're going to feed or entertain or do. Then you're looking outside to figure out who's your next victim to put in the box. It's unhealthy. Ooh, y'all. So the actual the whole conversation was probably like, well, in this particular part of this conversation, was probably like nine minutes. Um, and that was just like a two minute clip of that conversation. Um, and there was a lot. And I wish if you haven't taken a look at it, take a look at it because his Cam's um response afterward, you could tell that he was a bit flustered in terms of he's he's he was just so surprised and shocked by the the way that she was able to. Break read down. him. Yeah. Break him down and read him. But the first thing I wanted to mention was keep God out of this. Quit saying, "Oh, I'm gonna get however many kids God gives me." Like he, like yeah, he, yeah, like, made you lay down with that woman. Can we, can we <laughs> stop that? Like let's let's stop acting like that's that's that, that was his will. Okay, let's let's stop doing that. But I wanted two things I wanted to make note of is notice how she had to compliment him, coddle him reassure that she means no disrespect in order for him to, in order for her, her her to like properly let him know that what he was saying was some bs right like the the the, the care that she has to take with her words i think was just masterful um and probably indicative of how a lot of women probably feel they have to talk to their men you know what did you did, what did you guys think about the clip did y'all see this prior I did. Okay. I did see the clip. Um, to me, it's not surprising because I feel like a lot of guys, especially um, somebody like a Cam Newton, have those same ideologies or thoughts when it comes to marriage and children. Um, as far as her like having the conversation with him and kind of like sugaring it up a little bit, um, I think that uh, yes, as a woman we do that <laughs> with men. Um, and I don't even want to say it's just with men because I feel like, to be honest, I believe she's a therapist or she might be, I don't know if she's a therapist or psychologist. I'm not sure. I don't want to. Like yeah. So a lot of times I think that's also <clears throat> something that you do when you are delivering um, information to people that could come off as brutal a little bit. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be brutal in your delivery because that closes people off. Then they start to get defensive and they're, you know, response is to not even listen to what you're saying, but to just figure out how to respond to their their perceived, um, you know, basically their perceived um, you jab that you threw at them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't. I think that was very. Um, I, like you said, it was masterful because she's she's she is a master at what she does. Obviously, a doctor at what she does. So it's not surprising either that she had to do that. And as a woman, yes, a lot of times. We have to speak to men in this way because a lot of times it's hard for guys to take that self-reflection and not feel it feel as though as you're trying to down them or you're trying to just be negative about with them. And so it's like you, they always say, you, you know, you get more bees with honey. Like you got to you got to be sweet. You got to be sometimes like that's, that's how it is. That's just how it is. So um, why do you think he, he has eight kids with three women and he wants more? Why does he want more? That is something I have find hard to understand. I don't understand like the Nick Cannons and the, you know, um, can I don't understand why you feel it necessary to have so many kids. And this is my other caveat to that though. I don't care if you, the man or woman, both. I feel like I look at both men and women a little side eye when you telling me you be wanting like 10 something kid. I, it, it, it concerns me because I feel like there's something that you are trying to feel or avoid or some kind of purpose or meaning that you're placing on it that I feel like might, might indicate something is going on that with you because i just feel like even if you have eight kids 10 kids whatever in one home there's no way to be i feel like to give all those kids um all of the uh, time affection attention that they're going to need because 
that's a lot for one person to do. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't care if you, if it, I don't care if you let all eight kids the same mama, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. To me, I feel like it's a lot and somebody is going to suffer in that situation. I think um, part of it, especially for men like Nick Cannon or Kim Newton, uh, I think it's ego. A lot of people are very egocentric when it comes to parenting. They want extensions of themselves in the world. They think that they are uh, from good stock, for you know, for lack of a better terms, and they want to um, have that continue on, not realizing and understanding that these children are individuals and they have individual needs and they might not be anything like you. Um, but I think that 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 male ego of like, well, I'm so important or I'm successful or I have money, I want to continue this is a part of why they want to have a lot of those children. Um, I'm interested in um I got two things to say. For I, I I'm interested in how Cam Newton ended up here. Um, and I wonder if it has to do with his career path because Cam Newton grew up in a two-parent home. He has father and his mother in a home. I think he has younger siblings. Um, so I don't understand where his aversion to like a traditional family unit is coming from um, because that's not how he was raised. Um, and so I think I too, there's been a lot of, uh, I've seen conversations with people saying like, well, I only want to date somebody from a two parent home. Well, you know, you got to dig a little bit deeper than that. You know, it's not just, it's not just that because that's not always going to yield the result that you think. Can I answer the um, first question? Sure. So he says in the longer clip that he does want to get married. Um, he's just taking his time. That don't answer my question. <laughs> Well, said, have, no, I mean, I know what you're saying, but like that to me, his answer that still you have you you've been with three women, at least three women seriously, because you've had eight children with three women. So I don't understand where it, it's not. It is. I think uh, he's. Cha I think when you ask for about like why they want to keep having the kids, um, two, I think they're chasing something because even I don't know we talked about this on the podcast before, but Big Sean. Um, did an interview where they asked him about marrying Janae Eco, and they just had a child together. Their their first child together, I think, mm -hmm. and I think it's his first child. And he told the interviewer, "Well, we still got some things to work out before we we take that step." And it's like, you, well, you've already had a child with this person, so it's like people are waiting for. I think they're waiting for something better to come along, and they just don't. They don't want to say. <laughs> and I think to to be to add to this, I feel like. The, for, for a lot of men, the issue comes in is that they feel that having a child is not a greater commitment than actual marriage. They, they mm -hmm. view marriage as a bigger commitment than having a child with somebody. Mm -hmm. And I've seen this debate on Twitter. I've seen this debate all over social media of all these guys talking about how they just want to get married because it's a bigger commitment. And, you know, now when I leave, I got to get up my cars, my house, my money, this, that, all these, they list all these, you know, um, tangible things that they have to give up if they get the divorce versus basically they're saying on the flip side, if they're not married, you know, having a kid is basically in their minds what they're saying, not as a great of a commitment because they could just, to me, this is how I view it. Pick up and leave whenever you want to. Yeah, and and who gonna check me because there's nobody to keep me accountable really if I decide to leave my kid, you know, or whatever, if things don't work out right with this person. So to me, that sounds like more of the the thing because you could sit here and have eight kids, <laughs> no marriage, and you think, but but at the same time, you know, that kid is a living, breathing being that has needs that has. You know, not just financial needs, but physical, emotional needs. But that don't matter because you could just go on to the next and have mm -hmm. another baby. People don't see parenting like that, though. They don't yeah. see it as a commitment at all. They, parenting for a lot of people is an accessory. It's a cute thing I can take pictures with. A lot of people dismiss their children. Their children are not. It's, it's just a very, mm -hmm. it's a different kind of um, uh, view that a lot of people have when it regards to parenting and their kids. And, and I would say... And I was just going to say, too, I think particularly for men, I think they see it as less of their responsibility. Absolutely. And then we've, and we've seen that 
plenty of times where it's like where where men will say things like, well, I left my kid with his mom because he was five and he need his mom. But when he 14, he going to come stay with me. And then you expect the child to have this relationship with you All and right. respect you and listen to your advice and want to spend time with you. But you weren't there for him with his first 13 years of life. And you want to come in later and try and shape him into a man. Mm-hmm. A lot of men have that mentality of, you know, well, raising a child, the, 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 the hard part of raising a child when they little and you got to take them to school and do homework and that stuff is for the mom, the woman to do. And they don't think of it. They don't think of the emotional and mental labor of parenting. They don't value the emotional and mental labor of parenting. They only value the, and, and I say this lightly, value the right. financial. And that's right. rare. I mean, even with that, I say it, speak lightly on that. And I think that's also part of why, like, sometimes when you hear like older men talk about their children and it's like, well, how come, Oh, they don't call me like they call their mama. They don't come over here if they call me. Well, because mama be holding you when you was having that fever and put that towel on your head. Mama sing you that song when you don't feel good. Mama make sure like it's it's, it's, it's people, men have to start to realize mm-hmm. that the emotional and mental support of parenting is just as important as financial support and physically being there and that they're equal and are not gender specific. Um right. It's 100% okay for a man to rock his three-year-old son to sleep. It's 100% okay for you to sing your daughter a song. It don't all don't have to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like we got to get out of that and really understand that how important all aspects of it is. But one thing that really gagged Cam Newton, and we didn't see this in the clip, in the clip we showed you, but in the larger clip, he took offense because Dr. Bryan said she would not marry or date a man with kids. Mm-hmm. And he could not wrap his head around the fact that she would not date a man with kids. And she went on to say that, you know, that's a broken man or no, that, that's a broken. He's created a broken relationship and that's not what she wanted. So he needed clarity on like, what does it mean to be a broken relationship? What does mm-hmm. it mean to be in a broken family? But Cam Newton couldn't wrap his head around the fact that I'm six foot five. I'm a, a you know retired pro football player. I'm a millionaire with multiple businesses. How can she possibly say that she wouldn't date me? It was like evident that that was really, really bothering him in this conversation. So I say, if you can stomach it, because <laughs> you want to take so much ignorance. But if you can stomach but that, it. That was a very emotionally immature man. Because if you feel like the only thing, and this is the other thing, they talk so much about the um, high value. I'm a high yeah. value man. Uh-huh. I'm a this. is uh-huh. If the only thing that makes you high value is your income, is that really high value? It's not. And Especially she- in this time where we've had conversations <laughs> about how the social currency is changing. You as a man cannot only offer financial stability because women can go out and get that on their own now. You have to and be that's somebody that they a- want to be around and that's that why we have provide a lot of- something more than money. And that's why we have a lot of incels and a lot of men who are like very derogatory toward women. It's because they haven't realized that the, the social current, they haven't realized a shift. Right, the shift that has happened in dating and relationships where women are making money, women are owning businesses, women are at the top of their game in their careers and financially. And so, what you have to bring is something totally different. And actually, what you have to bring is some character because your granddaddy Mm -hmm. he didn't have to bring character because he was paying the bills, so he could beat your great, so he he could do all (laughs) the beating he wanted to do, all the cheating he wanted to do, have all the kids he wanted to have, and nobody was gonna say nothing to him because he was the one with that money. But now things have shifted, Mm -hmm. and some men have felt like they still want to live in that old way and don't want to have to deal with character flaws, personality flaws that need to be addressed to make you be a person that a woman would want to date in the first place. And I think that until that happens, I don't know, we gotta do some work in the community. (laughs) It's a lot of work that needs to be done. (laughs) Because the other other flip side of it is, and if I see these men talk about how there's so much high value because of what they can provide and what they can offer financially, then don't expect a woman to come to you and not want to have part of that financial you know, a uh, piece that you add. So it's like you, you lead with, I'm high value. I got, I'm a millionaire. I'm this, I'm that. But you don't want a gold digger. Right. <laughs> you want the woman who, 
you know, supposedly loves you for who you are. Loves you for who you are, and you know, or she got her own. She could do her thing. She don't need mine. You know what I mean? But if you got the woman who you set yourself out there to be, like if you got the gold digger who just said, "I'm gonna be pretty. I'm gonna be on your arm, and I just want to spend your money." Now that's a problem. You don't want that one. Mm -hmm. You don't want that one. So it's just like, if that's what you don't want, then don't put it out there. Quit putting the value on what financially, if you don't right. want to be the person who actually sits there and provides and does all these different things. So in this conversation, um, there was a, an old podcast clip that resurfaced where Cam Newton's I don't know if they're if they're in a relationship or the woman that he had his most recent baby with, I believe. I think her name is Jasmine. She's like the Instagram comedian or whatever. She used to do that turn up toy that I hated character. And it's interesting to me that he's that he's afraid of getting married when he's in a relationship with a woman who thinks like this. Let's watch this clip and let me and let me get your guys' opinions on this do for her man everything <laughs> what does that mean you know like packing his bag unpacking his bag um just making sure all the things that he wants and like I, I pretty much read his mind so it's like if i know you and i study you like i know how you are in the morning i know how you are about midday i know when you're in this mood what you need like before you can ever ask me for something i'm already on it i mean he's spoiled and you know, when I talk to my girlfriends about it, they're always like, oh, how are you guys doing? And I'm just like, girl, he's rotten. I'm like, he's spoiled rotten. Like, he's rotten. But I love that. Like, I want him to be that. I think my biggest flex is how I treat my man. And I've been known to love people back to health. And sometimes it's very draining. But my love is my superpower. And I used to hate that about myself. But now it's like, I'm just embracing it. Like, that's who I am. Like, if I love you, I can heal you. It's your joy. It is my joy. You know, I, I love to see him eating the meal that I cooked. I love seeing him sleep easy. Every night, like clockwork, I scratch this man's back to sleep. And I know when he's asleep because I can tell when his breathing changes. And some people might think that's psychotic, but that's like, I just know that's when I'm like, oh, I can stop now. But I find joy in being your rest, you know? So know what that means. And, and that works for us because he wants what I have to offer. What are you getting from all that you're giving? So I, I bring this up because I just can't help but notice the vast difference between how these two talk about the relationships and, and their approach to them. And I'm wondering, where is the is the disconnect? Because to me, Hearing from her about how she views it and how what she's pouring into it and hearing from him feeling like, you know, he's afraid to make this commitment. Meanwhile, this person is pouring all this stuff into you. It's like, how do you not, how do you not view that as a usury relationship? <laughs> because she, she using him too. It's the money, he, his money and fame. So even, so even if she don't get... First of all, I don't think there's anything wrong with what she's doing for a man. If you feel like that's what you want to do, do it. Or if that man is treating you right. But at the end of the day, she would not be doing that for a regular Joe Schmo. She's doing that because Cam Newton is a millionaire with multiple businesses who's famous. And that gives her access, that gives her, her children access. That's what that's about. So she, she could play all day like she's doing that and loving them back to health. But that's because of who he is. And he, and unfortunately to me, in my opinion... I ain't gonna say that. Never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why. If he if he was if he was an accountant, you know, for Coca Cola, making one twenty five a year, she wouldn't be doing all that. He a millionaire. He's famous. But it's just it's just funny to me access. because it's like you were, like Tori was talking about the the concern about being used and not wanting to spend the money and but then you're with somebody who's only doing those things for you because of the money. He well, they, most men like that. They not, they not okay. They're not smart enough to know that. He don't think that. He that's not even. He can, he don't think that way. It, it, it's because the ego is so strong and so high, and the pride will not let him really see the reality of the situation. Plus, he was a football player. His brain might not be. You know, <laughs> I know no shade. I'm just saying it really might be no, something going on there. You're right. You're right. Like, he not. Funny. He can't fathom that. It's the it's, you know that's not it's, it's unfathomable for him to think that. 
when you when you think that highly of yourself, you don't you can't fathom the idea that that's why she's with me. Seriously, it's beyond him. Tori, what you what you what you think? You just sitting there, Tori. <laughs> she like it. I love it. I guess. I mean, you know, I'm not mad at it. I mean, I I don't feel like no ways about it. I mean, like I feel like if that's your, you know, in that situation, that's your man or whatever. But but he don't I just seriously enough to. He's that, there. That's the part for me. That's well. Like, this clip was, was not was gonna this, marry you. This clip was before she had the baby. I think right. Yes, it was. So and I don't, is, I don't even still know. Married and he still no, still no heard that. right. They're not married, but I don't even know if they're even together. I was like, is, is this the same girl who? He was cheating and he had got an apartment complex on top of his restaurant. So that way, when she would check his location, it would look like he was at work, but he was really at the apartment. Is that the same girl? I don't know. I don't I don't think no. so. I, this no. is the newest the, the newest one that had the baby. Mm-hmm. But I don't even know if they're still together. I mean, because I feel like the way he even talked about it on that his interview with the doctor, he didn't say, like, I'm in a relationship right now. He literally just said, you know, my, my situation. I got eight kids. <laughs> Three mothers. He never really even said, and I didn't watch the whole clip, so I could be, I might be wrong, but I don't, from the clips that I saw, he never really said that they're current, he's currently in a relationship. He just, and he, all he mentioned was the fact that he was taking time. So he didn't mention, like, I'm with somebody, I love him, I'm we be growing, I'm learning in them. I, he didn't say nothing of the nat- nature. So we, he left it so open to where we don't even know. I don't even know if he went to girl or more. I don't know. She didn't have this baby now. So obviously she probably not going to say nothing right now until he, if he pop out with somebody else, then she might say something. But I'll, all I'm going to say to that is we'll see what, we'll see what she say in a little, in a little while. If she, if she say something, <laughs> I ain't got really much to add other than that. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and move on. I wanted to just briefly talk about, so this week has been the DNC all week long. Um, that has been the highlight of every night. Um, and so a lot of different things have been going on. I, what I want to say is the media think they slick because they really try to bamboozle us into thinking that Beyonce was going to be at the DNC the other night. And they really had it. I think they did that on purpose so that we could stay up and watch the DNC late because I wasn't watching it. For, <laughs> to be honest, I wasn't watching it. But when I heard this rumor that mother, Queen Mother, might have been there, I said, well, let me go ahead and stay up for a little bit. And I was tired, really. I was really tired. Let me go ahead and stay up a little bit and see if she's going to show up or whatever. And they waited till the last minute to say Beyonce's reps came and said, actually, no, she's never was, you know, booked for this. I said, you know, I'm going to be it. I can't. I cannot. I cannot. Um, so they tried it with that. But one thing I wanted to mention is, you know, we have been having a, it's been a lot going on with the Democratic Party. It's been a lot um, with everybody talking about the voting and who they're going to vote for. And in the black community alone, we've had a lot of discourse about whether or not, you know, Kamala is a pick and who's the choice. And and I've been seeing um, a lot of interviews and just people talking about you know, the black man and their stance on Kamala and, um, you know, whether they would or would not vote for her and for why or whatever. So D- uh, Dale Hughley, he's a comedian, talk show host, radio show host, um, I mean, radio talk show host. Um, he was at the DNC and he did a little speech and he just basically endorsing Kamala, Kamala now. Um, and he talked about he had to apologize because he spewed a lot of untruths and think uh, things against Kamala before knowing facts about things. And so, basically, what happened is on DL Hughley's talk show, ho, uh, talk show, radio talk show, there have been times where he kind of was against Kamala, um, and he was also spreading some misinformation about some of the policies and some of the things that she had done. And, you know, he has a large audience, you know, he's on the syndicated, nationally syndicated radio show, you know, Monday through Friday, Uh, a lot of black people, you know, men listen to the show and he was kind of spewing, talking down on her and spewing some things that were not true or not fact checked. And so he had did an interview where he talked about basically one, eventually one day Kamala called him and said, what's going on? Like, what's the issue? And he said he talked about he started to talk about some of the stuff that 
he had heard or the little things that they have put out, the media has put out there. And she invited him to her house to have dinner and have a conversation. And she basically told him, like, look, please, she's like, where did you get the research? You know, and he didn't, couldn't tell her where he got the research because it was more mainly hearsay and things that he had probably vit, uh, saw on media real quickly or whatever. So she said, you know, well, do some research find the research and then let's have come to my house. Let's talk, talk about it. So basically he's admits that he tried to find information, do research on the things. And basically some of the, the things that he was saying about her, he found out was just not true. There was not a credible source. There was not, you know, the, he didn't see the actual policy. So it was basically, he was running off of what other folks he didn't heard that probably weren't even credible saying um, or little fake stories that are people, you know, we know AI out here, just things like that. And when it came time to fact check and when he talked to her, he like, I really could. He's like, I can't even I can't even tell you, like, I have to apologize because I couldn't find the real source for these lies and things that I basically was told and I kind of spewed to my audience and I believed. So now he's on the Kamala train. Now he's endorsing her. He's like, we got to get on the board and we got to vote for her. And I'm like, that just kind of brought up to me like this bigger picture of like how so many people just refuse to even try to do research or just fact check things. And you're going based off of folklore <laughs> that you're reading on the internet and again running with it and not even taking the time to try to genuinely fact check a situation. And you're just going to say, that's why you're not going to like this person or, you know, vote for this person, yada, yada. And I had a conversation with someone where we briefly talked about, you know, this election and everything like that. And they mentioned like, well, what did, Kam what did Kamala do for me or something like of that nature? And I asked, well, what did Trump do for you? And their response was, well, he got, I, I, I got that money. I got that stimulus check or whatever, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm not even going to go into details of why that's just fact, uh, that that's not even true. <laughs> Cause I'm just, I've been, I'm, we talked about this time and time again and how it's not true that he gave you the stimulus checks. But what I wanted to say is like, why do you feel like if that was the case, because you got some stimulus checks from the government, that's enough to say, I'm not going to vote for her, but I'm, I'm going to just go vote for this other, this other guy. I, how come that's enough for you? That this money that you got from the government is enough to say you're going to vote for this person? That's not the real reason why they're not. But that's not the real reason why they're voting for Trump, though. That, the reality is. It, there is prejudice and bigotry and sexism and misogyny and all that rooted all up in this mixed all up in it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the the reality is that's what they think sounds good in their ignorance, but the mm -hmm. reality is they don't want a woman leader. And that's where I'm. That's where I'm at with it. Mm -hmm. Is it has to be that? Mm -hmm. Just say you don't want a woman, because to me, I just feel like how can you be that aloof? They can't say it. So you know what I mean? they, they they can't right like they know they can't say specifically oh I don't think we're ready for a woman president or I don't want a woman to lead they they know that that is um, politically inc un incorrect um, they know that then they'll be looked at as uh, we say why go ahead oh they know that they'll be um, you know looked at negatively for the for the most the most general population if you will and so let's pick apart the smallest things let's say she's not black enough. Let's say she's not really black. Let's say, you know, that she's not qualified. Let's say that. Let's say that she um, put a lot of black, a lot of innocent people in jail or that she penalized parents for their kids being absent from school. Let's say those things. And let's say Trump gave us some money. And that's why we want Trump in office. I think the, re the reality, reality is they just don't want a woman to be a leader. And I'm at the point where I'm like, just say that. And I actually wish they would. I don't. I, I don't. I don't think it's even <clears throat> about it, it being politically incorrect to say that because I think they don't want to be. They don't want to look at real facts. Like let's just be honest. Like first of all, 
if if when Kamala Harris wins the presidency in November, she won't be the first female leader of a no. of of a major world power. So mm. it's it's not it's like not, it's an incongruent even thought process to say women are incapable of leading. We've had women do everything in this country except be president, and then there have been women leaders, prime ministers, and presidents of other mm. world powers. Mm. So it's just like it's not even it's it's just you just. They don't want to be exposed in that kind of way to, to just face the facts of like what's real in the situation. Um, I can appreciate and respect anybody. And I feel like this is for, for certain people. And I feel like I don't want to say it's just black people, but I feel like we have a problem sometimes when people, we have this whole like, well, you got to keep to your word and stay true. Da, 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 da. But it's like, it's okay to change your mind when you get new information. And I feel like for him to come out and say, you know what? I had it wrong. I didn't know the facts. I didn't have my, my uh, sources aligned and I had a miss, um, you know, a misheld belief. And I think that's okay to say, you know what I mean? Like, and I feel like people want to use people changing their mind once they get new information as a bad thing. When in reality, that's the whole, that's how it should be. Right. Like you should be able to, um, gain new information, change your mind. I think that's part of also why people have this hard, staunch um, aversion to Kamala Harris because from when she ran for the presidency before, all this false stuff that was coming out, people are holding true to that, even though people are now saying that's not true. You got to do your research. You got to understand the situation and, and facts for yourself that, oh, well, she was a cop and she put Black people in jail. When there was this whole situation where the um the police had a, a situation and she refused to um she went against the police unions and stuff and they didn't like her for that so, so like people just don't take the time to do the research and then when they're presented with this new information for whatever reason again i don't know if it's ego or whatever people just don't want to hear the actual factual truth mm-hmm. and i feel like that's why when I, I get upset sometimes when you have these big platforms, like, you know, don't people, it's hard to say. Cause it's like, I know everybody is not, some people are exposed. They don't know. They don't know about research. They don't know about, you know, how the media can spew things a certain way. I get that. But that's why I feel like when you have platforms like the breakfast club or you have the D.O. Hughley show and stuff like that, you have a major platform if you don't know where these facts came from and you can't fact check to make sure what you saying is not incorrect, then it's like you are spewing these things to people who won't listen to trust your word and listen to what you say and then run with that. Cause oh, I heard it on this DL Hughley or I heard it on the breakfast club or whatever. And I know I can't, I'm not putting everything on them because you have a, as a, personality i mean as an individual you have the responsibility to try to do your own fact checking i get that like you know i understand that like mm-hmm. you can't as a grown person you just can't take what you heard but in the day and age that we live in we know so many people don't take that time and mm-hmm. they're going to listen so it's like it can be hurtful when you're getting the wrong information and you're just spreading it like this and now you have all these millions and millions of people listening and they're gonna take it and run with it and not think to do no other research behind it because the fact of the matter is is if you say something a certain kind of way people believe it if you sound believable if you sound credible people will believe what you say Mm -hmm. and you know i would just caution folks to not do that it's just like you know just because somebody sounds good and they're saying it's in a certain way or vice versa um doesn't mean that what they're saying is true or not true you got to do your own research and be able to, to use discernment before you make decisions. And real quick, uh, just lastly, speaking of using discernment to make decisions, why did Umar Johnson get on the internet talk, and make a video talking about he don't want to vote for Kamala Harris and Kamala Harris' campaign reached out to, her, to him to give him, ten, I think, $10,000 to do an interview with her. <laughs> And he went on this long tirade about it, and then he posted the receipts of the message, the alleged message that he got from the campaign. And it's, it, I don't know, should I read it? It's long. 
this is what the this is what the message that he said he received. And then I'll read his response. It says, Hello, Dr. Umar Johnson. This is such and such from Harris 2024 team. You are a big part of the Black community. Can you help us by completing a Zoom meeting with VP Harris? Um, we're paying $10,000, are looking for about an hour of your time. Please advise if you would like to complete the Zoom call. Here, you can help us get to the finish line. Okay, that's the alleged message that he got. Then mm-hmm. this is what he this is what he said in return. Peace and Pan-Africanism. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that all is well. I am not interested in your money. However, I am very interested in having a Zoom conversation with Vice President Harris to discuss our needs and her plans for the Black community. The Zoom must be live casted to the national Black community and may not be pre-recorded. I promise to be completely respectful of the Vice President, but I will ask direct questions about miseducation, mass incarceration, police brutality, economic strangulation, gentrification in the migrant crisis, reparations, and the need for a federal anti-Black hate crimes bill. And the the internet is just funny because everybody was just like, sir, (laughs) of all the things, you think Kamala Harris's campaign is sending you a blind random text message. It's just like, Come on. They're not text messaging you. It will, be a, kind of, it will be a phone call, but right. at the bare minimum. At the a bare minimum. Call, a phone call. <laughs> not a text message. They are not reaching Not out. with 10 grand of all. Come on. And that not. wouldn't even just be a good move. Like, as a party, talking to him wouldn't even be a good move. Exactly. And Anybody listen. who <laughs> pays attention will, can tell you that. <laughs> Anybody pays attention. And sometimes, listen, some, Dr. Umar, <laughs> he... <laughs> Omar. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not calling him Dr. Omar. Some, you know, they say a broken clock is right twice a day. Yeah, and that's true. like so. That's true. Sometimes you know, it's some things I can get with, some things I can't. Yeah. But I just don't think that he would be anybody that her team would be trying to reach out to. I'm just sorry, it's not, it's not happening. So he, he should have knew better. Mm-hmm. As he should have knew better. <laughs> Now, did he make a retraction? Did he make another video? Up, I, don't know. I, I just want to know. Like, did he clean this up? Like, okay, never mind. You know, not that my I bad. saw. I, I don't know. know. I mean, he may or may not. Who knows? And, or he might. He might and be again, thinking this is real. If you tell people don't vote for her, then who they supposed to be saying vote for Trump? Then what's the what's the alternative? I'm confused. You know, don't get me started on this. Because... Yeah, I, that's a whole other conversation. Okay, <laughs> we didn't even talk. We didn't even mention that in this in this uh, story that he he made that that uh, video about that, but. That's why we. That's why I said a broken clock is right twice a day. You. <sighs> All right, <Well>. guys. <laughs> gonna go ahead and wrap up our talking points. <laughs> um, we're gonna go ahead and go and get to our second dose, which is our keeping it real for a minute segment, and I am just going to share something real brief with you all, and that is the fact that over this past week, something that. I um, had a conversation with a friend with, I had a conversation with a friend about was that God kept me. And we were talking about something so different and it came to, it came around full circle to the fact that um, God, you know, who he's good. He kept, he kept me. And basically it was, it could, that can go for so many things when I think about my life. Um, but we were talking about like, just, some of the things that we would have done in our youth that now that we older, we wouldn't be not doing no more <laughs> or we can't do no, we're not just, you know, you make dumb decisions, you do stuff. And now that we're older, it's like, you got stuff to lose. You got, you know, now that you're older, you're more mature. You just be like, I'm not going to move in that way. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to think a little bit more about my decisions because, you know, I know that if I do A, B, and C, those really could have some tough consequences. And so we were just talking about that. And I was thinking about my life in my youth. And I was just like, whoa, God is good. I said, God is so good. I said, because he has kept me. And, you know, it don't take much for something to happen and your life is ruined or just things and, you know, it's, it's things and happening. So, you know, I thought about that. And then also I thought about just, the fact that I did have to spend one month without health insurance and God kept me. <laughs> I had no issues. And I'm like, thank God, nothing happened. I'm healthy and all that. 
it's just so many ways in which he keeps us. And so really that has just been my thought, you know, for the week I would say is that, um, yeah, God kept me <laughs> and I'm grateful. And I, it's, I can't do nothing but thank God because <laughs> Lord knows where I would have been. <laughs> Child, I've been there, <laughs> been there, been there. Been there. Uh, so that's it for the second dose. Uh, we're gonna keep it moving. Let's jump right on in um, to our triple dose. And I have, I'm looking at my time, I have a couple things. This, this kind of go in alignment with some of our themes, talking about just like marriage, relationships, and things like that. So I am going to go with, um, Let's see here. So first off, okay, so I wanted to bring up this conversation and then I'm going to read this, my am I the a-hole. So there was another debate that was going on like TikTok actually in Twitter, but there was a guy interviewing, um, just going out interviewing guys. And one of the little uh, hypothetical questions or scenarios was, okay, your wife is in labor in a hospital with your baby, about to have a baby. And your homeboy gets shot. Who are you going to go see? (laughs) Okay. So in the video, I think it was like three or four guys um, that were a friend group or whatever. And three of the guys in the friend group said they're going to go see their homeboy. And they were like, I'm going to see my homeboy. Like, I'm going to see him because he he got shot. And, you know, uh. That's my man. My man. This the one of the dudes in the clip of the video actually said, "My man. My that's my man. My man. My man. I'm going to go see my homeboy. My man. I got shot." And so then they like, uh, you know, it's cool because I mean, I, I'm gonna go check out. I'm checking the baby. My wife later. I'm gonna go see my homeboy. Got shot. Today. There was one guy in the video who said, "I'm going to see my wife. Like that's my wife. That's my kid." That is my family, my blood. I'm supposed to be there to protect her. Like, I'm going to be with my wife. If my homeboy got shot, he's like, there was, he was like, maybe he was doing something he had to be doing. He's like, but I'm going to go see my man. So, anyway, obviously, that video went, took off. The debate went viral. And there were so many people um, on uh, social media and everything with their debates. And people, some of the women were responding like, the question was, who were you going to go see? Nobody. So the, some of the guys' um, response was, well, that's life or death. If my homeboy got shot, he that's life or death. And so there was people, in the, women in the response saying, well, he the, the question said he got shot. It didn't say he was dying. He could have got shot in his arm or his leg. They were like, however, childbirth can be life or death for the mom and the baby. Like, it's not always a simple delivery. Things happen fast and things can change. So, you know. Who's to say your wife or your baby, something happens to them during childbirth and you over here at the hospital with your homeboy who got shot. So it was, you know, everybody had their scenarios, their back and forths and things like that. Um, And it, it sparked bigger debates about, you know, why do these men feel like you have so more loyalty and like with your homeboy versus the woman that you chose to marry and procreate with and bring life, another life into the world. And you're willing to miss your child being brought life into the world to go see a homeboy. Sorry, I can't. Y'all not go, yeah. <laughs> like what's the, what's going on? I can't. Y'all not going to like my answer. I don't. <laughs> what is this? What is, is it a question you want to ask us? Or what? So this is a story. That I'm just, I'm just lining up. <laughs> okay, this, I this, okay. I'm just saying, this is what happened in the okay. conversations. Okay. okay. So, and this is just about marriage and everything. So, (laughs) in regards to that, let me see. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, because I think. Mm. No, sorry. This is not the right. This is not the right one. <laughs> that am I the a-hole I had. Okay, so basically, the the one I had, I lost it. It said that basically the wife had uh, slipped and fell <laughs> down the stairs. 
and she broke her ankle. She said it was clearly broken. So her husband, he works. She, I think, stays at home. He works and he has like his own business. So what he did was she called him. Well, he had already left. She called him and said, hey, I fell. I broke my ankle. I need you to come back. He comes back and he calls the ambulance for her. The ambulance come. They take her to the hospital. He goes to work. <laughs> so she gets to the hospital. They're like, oh, we got to do some stuff to elevate it. But eventually you're going to have to have surgery tonight. So she calls her husband. And her husband's like, okay, well, just let me know like what they say. We'll be if if you if you're gonna have to have a surgery or whatever, I, or if you, I could come pick you up, let me know. But he didn't come. He was he went to work. So she asked him, could you just bring some items for me? Because I'm supposed to be going to surgery. Now they say I'm going to surgery. He tries to come, supposedly, but they wouldn't let him in. As apparently, is what he told her. So she goes, she talks to him before surgery, or she texts him before surgery, no response. She goes into surgery, comes out of surgery, texts him again, call him again, no response. Apparently, the doctor also tried to call him, and his phone was supposedly on silent, no response. He didn't ever respond back. So then the next day, she's able to get a hold of him, and he's like, oh, he didn't even end up going to work the next day, but he didn't come up there until she called and was like, you know, basically, I'm about to get released. You know, you can come get me. And so he comes and gets her. So she's mad because she felt like he should have been at the hospital with her. She, she understands he got to work and all that, but she felt like he just wasn't as concerned. Anything could have happened. She was scared of, for having surgery. He wasn't there when she woke up. He, he was just not there to be responsive. So she says she got home and it was kind of eating her up for a little bit. And she brought it up. Like, I'm really feeling a certain way. You wasn't here for me. And I'm upset about it. And in return, he gets mad at her for being mad that he didn't go. So she's like, you know, well, am I the a Because I brought up the fact that I feel like he should have been with me. Uh, well, obviously not. Um, this kind of goes into um, part of my response from what you were talking about before, about the women in the hospital and the Homeboy getting shot. And there's a term for this, and I'm mad I can't look it up right now because I probably wouldn't find it in time. But there's a term for men who actually, they're heterosexual men, but they do not actually like women. <laughs> in a sense of like women as people and who they are. And I feel like this is an example of that, as is those previous examples of the men going to see their homeboy in the hospital versus their wife. Like, I don't think you actually love or like or care about the person that you're with if they have an accident and they have to have surgery and you can't even show up or answer a phone call. At the, the bare minimum, you should definitely be there. Uh, but you can't even answer the phone or a text message. She's about to go under anesthesia and stuff and anything could happen. And you're not even going to be there. Yeah, you don't like her. And I think you should divorce him. Honestly, I'm sorry. That's a divorceable offense for me. And I, I'm not about to argue with you about it either. We're just going to have to get a divorce. Because clearly you don't like me. You don't even care about me, or my well-being. So, yeah, divorce. Immediately. According to Merriam-Webster... A uh, misogynist is a person who hates or discriminates against women. So technically, your husband's a misogynist. He hates you, girl. <laughs> he hates you. <laughs> you don't. You show up for people you love. When you love somebody, you show up. Matter of fact, often when you love somebody, you show up for stuff you don't feel like showing up for because you love the person. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you were in the hospital under anesthesia and he was for a whole 24 hours couldn't get in touch with him. And what was she doing? Hates, Cheating? That man hates, that man That's where you. my man will go. You were cheating on me. You saw this as an opportunity that I was gonna be at home for twenty four hours. You had a hoe at the house. <laughs> See, that's why I'm I'm crazy. My mind gets a spiraling. It's because not gonna there's work. nothing else he could have been doing. But what she, else were you doing? There's nothing else to be doing. I didn't understand why he called an ambulance when she called him back home. Why didn't you just take her to the hospital? Why did you call the ambulance? You could have. He taken wanted her. to go back to work. He got a hoe at work. He probably like that's probably what it is. So is what's the point of you being um your own business owner <laughs> if emergency happens and you can't say we closing up shop today because my wife that had an emergency like where is the beauty <laughs> uh, 
People and do what know. they want to do. They do what they want to do. People do what they want to do. He didn't want to be there. And that should mm. tell you everything you need to know. What else? Ain't nothing else. <laughs> I mean, what uh-huh. else? <laughs> what else? We got to be more careful when we choose who we marry. In, okay. What we got to be more careful when choosing who we marry. In. Well, it's just... because we live in a society that makes you feel bad if you're single. Especially yeah. women. Well, especially women. You you made it feel bad if you're a woman and you're single. Yeah. So you just get married because you think you're supposed to do. Uh-huh. And then you'll be miserable in your marriage because you got a husband. Everybody, ooh, I can't stand it. Ooh, my husband, my husband, my husband. Let's be like, shut up. Like, no, but the gag is. Let me sorry, The gag is, is like, when you talk to certain men about how certain, like, if you, it's kind of jarring. Like, it is. When you be around men and the way they talk about their wife and their kids and their family, and it's like, you do not like your wife. You, you don't like, you don't like her. No. You actually hate her and your kids. It's like, mm-hmm. you are mad. And it's like, go to a barbershop like, on a Saturday. Oh, you will he learn a lot. And it's like, sir, you chose this. Like, in our society, men ask women to get married. So, like, you ask her to do this. Because so you, like because they're also do, because they're also to be honest they're also um you know falling into those those societal norms and those things as well you know what i mean like as much as they hate to say it they are also affected in trying to do those things that they feel like they're supposed to do you know because if they I, don't they look like the, the crazy one or whatever I, I understand that but i just feel like don't you made you you made a choice like we have choices. You chose to go with what society told you to do. <laughs> don't be mad at somebody. Well, that's else because also a lot of men don't. A lot of men don't marry their first choice either. That's well, that's conversation for another day. Yeah. Well, that's a lot, of, a lot of men mess over the first choice. So they hurry up and get to who they, they can get, and they settle <laughs> mm-hmm. for whoever they can get, and they realize they pining for somebody else in the back of their mind yeah. who they did so badly, yeah, that's true. and that lady ain't even gonna look at you another. She ain't gonna look at you ever again. Mm-hmm. So you marry who you can and be miserable. Well, okay, I got one last one I wanted to go with, over with y'all, and that's it. We're gonna wrap it up. I just wanted to see if <laughs> which y'all if we got the same thoughts on this or not. Okay, am I the a-hole for telling my best friend she should call off her wedding? I am a 27-year-old female. I have a best friend, Daisy, who's also 27 and getting married in a month and a half to her boyfriend Max. They've been together for three years and are really perfect together. I was super supportive of their wedding until recently. About a week ago, Daisy had a bachelorette party. She didn't want to do anything crazy. So just the closest girlfriends went to a small vineyard for a nice dinner. And it was during this dinner that she dropped the bomb. She made a big show of pouring everyone a glass of the, uh, of the house red, except for herself, and took a huge sip of her water. She was smiling at all of us as if we were already in on the joke, but we weren't. But then slowly, realization dawned and she confirmed she was pregnant. Two months pregnant to be exact. We were all happy for her, congratulating her, hugging her. Then someone made one of those jokes about them having to get married just because she's pregnant and she got all mischievous again. She then revealed that Max doesn't know and that it was going to be a surprise. The reaction to this was mostly positive, which dumbfounded me. Max and Daisy have always wanted kids. I even know they explicitly talked about it before deciding to get married, which is definitely the right thing to do. However, just because two people want kids doesn't mean one person can just make the decision of when is the right time. And that's exactly what I feel Daisy is doing. I don't think you should marry someone when you're keeping someone or when you're keeping something that massive a secret. I have no idea how she managed to keep it a secret for two months anyways. But according to her, they've been so busy with the wedding planning, it was easy to hide. And anything weird happening like her vomiting, she just attributed to stress. I talked to Daisy the, uh, the day after the party. I told her what I thought and I and that I was just trying to look out for her and that if it was the other way around, I would want her to do, to do the same. She got really quiet while I was talking and afterwards told me she didn't appreciate me butting in on her marriage and that it was her decision. I pointed out that it shouldn't just be her decision, that she was majorly affecting Max's life too, without even including him in the conversation, and that she shouldn't go through with the wedding if she was insistent on keeping him in the dark. This pissed her off and she told me to leave and not contact her. Since then, I've gotten some messages from our friends who were at the party, so I guess she told them. 
A couple of them agree with me, but most of them are on her side and are calling me an a-hole for ruining what's supposed to be the most exciting time in Daisy's life. And what gives me the right? I don't regret speaking up, but I'm worried that I might have ruined our friendship and I'm not even sure if I'll still be allowed to come to the wedding. Did I maybe overstep? I think you did. I think you a hater. I don't think why. Why do you care? They've been together for three years. They talked about having kids. Two months is still the first trimester. So some women might not want to say something right away. So I'm like, you talk a hater to me. Something deep. Um. I yeah. I kind of agree. I think you are kind of butting into their relationship problems and you making assumptions about things that mm-hmm. you don't have no real insight into. Um. Because like uh like. Like the uh, Dr. Brian lady was telling Cam Newton, like you're you actively making a choice, right? So he know what he, he know what him and his fiance was doing. Yeah, they was so you was made some choices in that, and so this is a possibility as a result of those actions that y'all took. So it's not like he gonna be completely blindsided. It's not like she was, you know, injecting herself with a sperm without him knowing or something. You know what I mean? Like they knew what was going on. Uh, so I do feel like you kind of. Our button a little bit. I don't think I would have felt no way about that. Um, I would. I do think. I mean, and I would have maybe just asked like, "Well, why you? Why you don't? How long are you going to plan on keeping a secret? Or why don't you just tell them?" I don't. I don't get. I don't get that. Um, but it's her business. So she might be pregnant for eight weeks. She so she probably just found out what four weeks yeah, ago. But you don't keep that from your fiance. You might not tell other people, but you. I would assume that you would tell your man. She wanted to surprise him, but I guess I don't know the details of the surprise. Like if it was gonna be at the wedding, like what it is it gonna Maybe be? She wanna give him a sign of, a little gift box or something. I don't you don't know what, what her plan I is. I think it's strange that you tell your friends before your fiance. Yeah, that's that's weird to me. Uh I do think but that's I, weird. I, I feel like to make it a whole surprise to them and then before you let him know, it's too easy for her them to I feel like it's too easy then for it to come out and then he find out on the fly from somebody else right. because you didn't tell him first. But that was her choice to do. However, I guess I agree with y'all. I don't. I don't understand why the girl cared that much <laughs> that she decided to do that. It's like, why you care that much? They are about to get married. Typically, when you have a bachelorette party, the mar- the wedding is within the next couple weeks or a month. Like it ain't that far apart mm-hmm. usually. So I'm not like it, even if she did wait to the wedding. I don't know. I I wouldn't do that because I just feel like I wouldn't trust that it would be they gonna hold water to the wedding, but. Yeah, it's kind of strange to me that she cared that much <laughs> as a friend. Be like, why are you starting a marriage on this big secret? Like, yeah. why do you care <laughs> that much? Because and she, because she don't look at it as a secret. She look at it as a surprise. Like she's so going to tell him. So, so she, one, she's going to tell him too. It sounds like she feels like he's going to be excited with this news. So it's like she's not. She don't look at it like a secret. It's not the same right. as like I'm hiding something that I don't want you to know because he of already gave her thing. He already it's not, getting married. It's not the same thing. It's not the same connotation. To me, secret it has a negative connotation to it. You right. Know, the, the language she's using is very specific. It's very specific. I think it's more of a surprise. That's how she. That's what she called it. I'm going to surprise him. Now, right. unless she know that her friend got some sneaky tendencies, <laughs> maybe. But, but I still don't see why that would. Con- I mean, that's not your business. But really. women, right. she said they perfect together. They talked about getting married and having kids. And want to get married first. I mean, technically, she only two months pregnant. The marriage probably gonna come because she just had a bachelorette party. So you're gonna be married by the time the baby get here. Like, so it just gives to me, like, are you a little jealous that she's got her marriage and her baby coming right away? I don't know. Cause why else does it really matter if they're already getting married and that's her way to choose to surprise him? Then that's that's their way that he she chooses to surprise him. And I how much mean, of a surprise is it really gonna be when y'all been doing the do? I mean, you know how people are. You know how people are. I mean, but I mean, they're gonna act surprised like they ain't know it was a possibility. (laughs) I guess. Well, email. I guess we'll see if there's any updates later on that one, but no, whatever. Um, that is gonna wrap up our show this week, guys. If you guys want to tune in or chime in on any of the topics, let us know. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tripodose Pod. Let us know your thoughts, and we shall see y'all in the next one. Bye.